Today we're checking out more iconic album covers and what they look like nowadays on Google Maps. We've got releases from The Eagles, The Doors, Kiss, Zeppelin, coming up next. Hi, my name is Frank. Welcome back to channel 33 RPM, your channel for vinyl gear and more. I'm having a lot of fun doing these album cover videos. If you missed part one, I will leave a link below this video. First up, The Eagles, Hotel California. Released in 1976, Hotel California was The Eagles' fifth album and the first with guitarist Joe Walsh. It went on to become one of the best selling albums of all time, moving over 32 million copies worldwide. The front cover depicts the fictitious Hotel California. In reality, it's an image of the Beverly Hills Hotel, which is, as you can likely guess, not located on a dark desert highway, but rather at 9641 Sunset Boulevard. Don Henley reportedly wanted the album cover to convey an atmosphere of faded glory, loss of innocence, and decadence with a slightly sinister edge. And that is what he got. Under the direction of art director John Kosh, the swanky high-end Beverly Hills Hotel was photographed just before sunset by Dave David Alexander, giving it that ominous glow. Kosh, by the way, is the former art director for Apple Records and worked on the covers of Abbey Road and Let It Be, and also designed many of the Beatles' solo projects. Let's see what the Beverly Hills Hotel looks like today. To get the right angle for the cover shot, Kosh and Alexander used a cherry picker to get up 60 feet above ground. The photo was reportedly taken from Sunset Boulevard, so let's start there. Obviously, this is a very nice area. The Beverly Hills Hotel is not the holiday in. In fact, when I checked the hotel's website, rooms were going for a thousand bucks a night or more. From this angle, you can clearly make out the hotel's domes, which are a dead giveaway that this is, in fact, the Hotel California. Apparently, back in the 1970s, the owners of the Beverly Hills Hotel threatened to sue the Eagles over the album cover, but they backed off over time when reservations tripled thanks to the free publicity from being featured on one of the biggest selling albums of all time. As for the back cover of the album and the gate fold, those were shot elsewhere in the lobby of the Lido Hotel. While the Lido looks posh on the album, in reality, it's much less swanky than the five-star Beverly Hills Hotel. From California to New York, let's check out where the cover of this album was shot. Dressed to Kill was Kiss's third album and featured the track Rock and Roll All Night, which would go on to become a Kiss concert staple. At the time this album was released, however, Kiss was not exactly a household name and money was very tight. In fact, to save cash, Dressed to Kill was produced by the record label's president, Neil Bogart. The album cover shows Kiss out on the streets of New York City wearing very poorly fitted suits. The image was shot on the corner of 8th Avenue and 23rd Street in Manhattan, which you can see right here. I can imagine that seeing four dudes in full face makeup having their pictures taken must have caused a few heads to turn back in 1975. Or heck, maybe it didn't. After all, this is New York City. And check out those clogs Gene is wearing. Not exactly becoming of a demon, is it? But hey, they were poor and Jean and Ace were wearing borrowed clothing. I found this picture online, which I love because it shows some perspective. You can see the photo was taken at 4.51 p.m. And that kid right there looks pretty interested in Jean and who can blame him? Overall, the Dress to Kill album cover isn't great and was obviously done on the cheap, but it is cool to see where the photo was shot. Next, The Doors, Morrison Hotel. Released in early 1970, Morrison Hotel was the band's fifth album and was considered a bit of a comeback at the time. It reached number four on the Billboard Top 200 and included one of my favorite Doors tracks, Roadhouse Blues. The front cover featured an image of the band inside the Morrison Hotel, which was a real place and still exists today. Let's check it out. The hotel is located at 1246 South Hope Street in downtown Los Angeles. Quick side note, the band was not given permission to go inside the hotel to take the front cover photo. So when the hotel clerk was occupied, the guys quickly scooted inside and took their positions while photographer Henry Diltz snapped a quick roll outside. The window where the doors once stood behind is now boarded up, but the words Morrison Hotel on the glass still look the same. The photo on the back of the album, meanwhile, was taken at a place called the Hard Rock Cafe at nearby 300 East 5th Street. The Hard Rock Cafe restaurant chain would later take its name from this album. On Google Maps, the old Hard Rock looks like a convenience store nowadays, 
or at least it was when this image was captured. It's cool to see what it looks like nowadays. Finally, this one is really cool. Let's check out where the cover of Led Zeppelin's Houses of the Holy was shot. Released in 1973, Houses of the Holy was Led Zeppelin's fifth album. It was produced by Jimmy Page and mixed by Eddie Kramer, who had previously worked with Jimi Hendrix and would go on to produce a bunch of other bands, including Kiss. The cover art was inspired by Arthur C. Clarke's novel Childhood's End, where hundreds of millions of Earth's children gather together to be taken off into space. It's a collage of several photos taken at the Giant's Causeway in Northern Ireland. Let's head there now. It's cloud covered here, but if I drop the little Google guy down, we can take a close look at the area from several different angles. The Giant's Causeway is an area of about 40,000 interlocking columns, the result of an ancient volcanic eruption. It is located on the north coast of Northern Ireland, about three miles from the town of Bushmills. From these images, you get a really good sense of the landscape where the kids were photographed. While 11 kids appear on the cover of Houses of the Holy, only two were actually photographed, brother and sister Stefan and Samantha Gates. Photo shoot took a painstaking 10 days. Photographer Aubrey Powell wanted a certain light, but he never quite got it due to the constant rain and clouds. Some tinting effects were added in post-production to get the effect you see on the album cover, which I think is one of Zeppelin's best. The cover has caused controversy over the years. Most recently, Facebook temporarily banned the image for not meeting community standards. Those are the four album covers we're checking out in today's episode. If you have a suggestion of album covers I should check out in a future episode, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you dug this episode, I appreciate a quick thumbs up. Dear 33ers, I hope you have a great week. Until next time, keep on spinning.